Ooh, <laughs> guys, I'm super excited because today's the first day of my four day challenge. I do it every month. I've got over 300 agents register for this one, and the energy is through the roof. In the Facebook group, the videos of people that are um, the agents that are doing their intro videos, um, introducing themselves to everybody else, and all the comments back and forth. This is the most intro videos that I've ever seen on a challenge. Uh, for our group. So th this is, these are some ambitious agents. This is going to be incredible. So I'm going to hop on there as soon as I get through filming this. But what I want this video to be about is the fact that two things. One, that 50% of agents, right? Data shows are ghosting prospects. Okay. <laughs> like we've heard of agents getting ghosted, but, but not really about the agents ghosting. Okay. So there's only two reasons why this could be happening. I want to talk about this and I want to get your thoughts. And also there's this newfound form of steering that's happening on a really small level ever since the new rules came into effect. And we knew that this type of steering was going to happen. And we knew that this was going to be one of the big backfires of the people that put these rules into place thinking that this was going to save the world. And and it's happening on a really small level. Will it become more of a problem? And how can you take advantage of it? That's what I want to talk about. So when I talk about that, I want to tell you uh, uh, some, some things that you can do to make more money, some things you can tell your buyers, right? Advise your buyers in a specific way that's going to help them navigate the new water. So that's what we want to talk about today. But first, I want to ask you, would you like to turn your yearly income into your monthly income, right? Because that's what I did. And I can tell you, it was way easier to make 100,000 in a month than it was to make 100,000 a year. I was working a lot harder to make 100,000 in a year. So if that's you, if you want to turn your, your yearly income into your monthly income, then I'm going to take you through it step-by-step step right here live on this YouTube channel. Uh, that's going to be Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern. Wednesday, 4 p.m. Eastern. So be there, be square, hit that subscribe button and let's get it. So let's let's dive in here, right? Um, the, why is a real estate broker ghosting us? Survey shows many don't respond to buyers. This is this is interesting. Um, if you clicked on a real estate agent's name next to an online listing, don't hold your breath waiting for a call. <laughs> Nearly half of online property inquiries are simply ignored, according to the new research from the real estate analyst and consultant, Mike Delpreti. Mike Delpreti is, 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 is great uh, real estate statistics. Delpreti wrote uh, what the recent study uh, studies results highlight significant areas of opportunity for brokerages and agents in the fundamentals of customer service. Basically, he's saying like, you know, if these people aren't getting tended to, then there's a hole in the market that somebody could plug up. Yeah, absolutely. But it should also show consumers that they shouldn't expect too much from the agents they try to contact, whether electronically or face to face um, to test agents responses. A hundred secret shops, right? Secret shoppers, basically, um, is often used. Uh, they, they're, they're often used to kind of test customer experiences, et cetera. In this case, the team of experts used a standardized method conducted in a professional, repeatable manner to evaluate each brokerage. Um, the secret shoppers inquired about specific medium price properties on individual brokerages websites, mostly via online forms. All their inquiries were made during normal business hours on weekdays. A whopping 47% of the inquiries were flat out ignored. Of those that got a response, the median time to hear back was a reasonable 39 minutes. That was the median. Okay, but the average time, though, was less than eight hours and 17 minutes. Okay, to test agents sitting in open houses, Del Pretty writes, secret shoppers walked into local medium priced open houses across the nation and collected specific data points about their experience. The result, these agents didn't do much better than their online counterparts. 42% uh, failed to ask for contract information from the potential customers. Um, and 58% of the agents who did, um, a third of them never followed up. Okay. And of the 58% of agents who did ask for contact information, right? So, 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 so out of the 58% that did, a third of those never followed up. So, out of the whole, you got a uh, 100%, right? And only 58% and only um, asked for the information, and only 12% total 
um, actually followed up, right? So there's a follow-up problem. <laughs> there's a follow-up problem. Um, Del Pretty um, describes the overall findings as a way most interactions were in, uh, consistently inconsistent. There was no, no rhyme or reason to the level of the quality of follow-up uh, or even if there was any follow-up at all. Um, it was all roll the dice each time. Del Pretty's bottom line, the study lays bare the immense opportunity and simple getting to the base, getting the basics right. Follow up with people in a consistent, structured way. That's how the pretty sees it. But as I see it, don't expect too much from um, from agents you meet along the way and you won't be disappointed. So I think there's two reasons for this. OK, either the agent is too busy. Right. They're too busy. They're doing too many deals. They got too many irons in the fire because, guys, we can only handle so much. Real estate agents, that's why business is unlimited forever for every single agent. Same same reason that a, a buffet never runs out of food. You can't eat all the food. You can't do all the deals, right? It's not that if you could handle unlimited deals that you could do it all. Sure, you could do every deal if you could handle unlimited deals, but you can't. And you can't eat 10 pounds of chicken. <laughs> you know, Therefore, there's more than you can handle at all times and still be more than enough left over for everyone else to get full and still be more than enough left over. So... There's two reasons that this could be. One, the agents are too busy, right? And so the, the better agents, the ones who've established their name, the ones who, um, you know, have that reputation and get a bunch of word of mouth, you know, and are busy, you know, or even the ones that are newer that haven't built up that reputation yet, who are just great at getting out there and beating the bushes and putting, getting deals rolling, right? And shaking the bushes. You've got so much going on. I've said it many times. If, if I, if I made calls, right? If I, if I made calls for three, about three weeks, I'd be so busy. I couldn't even make calls anymore. And you guys know the ones who actually make calls, you do get too busy to make calls. And that's what I think we're seeing here for some agents. And I think some of the other agents just don't care. <laughs> so I think you're either too busy, right? You got so much going on, um, or either you don't care. But it, it brought up an interesting point to me, you know, as I created this Instagram video um, that that maybe the buyers, you know, and, and this this sounds this sounds crazy coming from me. But I thought about this and I'm thinking, OK, if I'm a great agent and I got more than I can handle and I got increase coming in, then I think one of the reasons why agents are ghosting a lot of these buyers, because they can tell that they're not serious. Right. Or they have enough serious people on their plate. They don't need another maybe serious. They need they need people that are serious. So if a buyer is extremely interested and you want to work with this agent, it's almost crazy as it sounds that you're kind of interviewing. You know, it's kind of like in reverse of the listing appointment where the seller is interviewing three agents. It's almost like, you know, the agent is interviewing three buyers to see which one they want to work with, you know, to help. That, that's, I mean, it's like, isn't it, is it the buyer's responsibility to follow up with the agent? I mean, what kind of like, it, this is wild, but I think it's the world that we live in because we never had this amount of like internet leads. And I'll, I'll go further with this. We had the lawsuit with realtor.com that's happening right now for the fake leads. Mm -hmm. So if, if, you know, like a, a lot of these online inquiries, it's kind of the boy that cried wolf. If you've been burnt over and over and over again with online inquiries with people who aren't serious, then when an online inquiry comes through, you're just looking at it like it ain't serious. And you got plenty of other things happening that are serious. I think we've been jaded as, as an, as an industry, um, around online inquiries and buyers, not being, not being as serious, not being super serious. And then if you, if you do spend the time, it's like, what are the, what's the conversion rate there? Right. And then, and then where could you get a better ROI? There's a lot of, a lot of other areas where it's a better ROI. Um, so it's very interesting. And then the ones that don't care, I mean, <laughs> that's why that they're, that's why 90% of people don't make it in this business because they're scared to even call an online lead, right? They're scared to call an online lead. So anyway, I, I, listen, you let me know what you think about this. How do you handle this situation? How serious do you feel like these online leads, online leads are? And, and the people coming into the open houses, they come to the open houses. The agent probably had a conversation with them. They probably made a judgment right then that this person was serious or not serious. You know, hey, either way it goes. How do I handle all this stuff? I'm putting every single person in my database to get my weekly email to continue to build my brand. I'll try to um, determine you know, what level of, 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 of seriousness 
that that each prospect is, and I I evaluate where I need to spend my time. I mean, it's really as simple as that. This is a business that we're running. So let me know what you think in the comments. As for this steering, right? So it says new systems for brokers. Meanwhile, now that buyers are responsible for their share of real estate um, commission, there's a good chance they'll be hunting not just for houses, but also for sellers willing to pay at least a portion of their fees. So basically like... Um, you know, and this is something we've talked about. I want to know if you're seeing this in your market. The buyers are basically saying, only show me homes where the seller is definitely offering a buyer agent commission. Is that happening in your market? I'd like to know. Put in the comments. Call it a new form of steering. A new form of steering. The term used to describe how agents take their clients only to houses offering the best commission split between them and the listing agent. So forever, forever, we felt like it, that, that it was the agents who were steering the buyers to go look at this home because they're offering, you know, or look at this home without saying anything like in their mind, they're saying, oh, they're offering more commissions. So let's show them this house. But in reality, that never happened like that never happened. And now you actually have it happening on a very small scale. Right. I can't wait to see the actual data as time goes on and we get more into the new rules and everything of of the data between actual steering. Because like before this, there was no steering. Why? Because the buyers could see every home for sale and they're going to say, I want to see that home. And the agent really had no say. So it didn't matter what the commission was offered. Right now. Now that we have this scenario, now you do have steering. It's legit steering, and it's not from the agents. It's from the buyers who are saying, I don't see homes unless the, unless the seller's offering a buyer agent commission. It's so interesting. <clears throat> now it looks like buyers will be in the driver's seat. According to a recent study from in Inman Intel, the research arm of the Inman Real Estate News Service, um, the process is prone to become much more prevalent when guided by buyers themselves. In a survey of 611 real estate professionals, they found that most buyers' agents, directed in many cases by the buyer, will feel the need to confirm the portion of their commission uh, the seller is willing to cover before making an offer on a house. The survey found that three out of five agents plan to reach out to the listing agent to confirm the buyer's side commission before their client makes an offer. And one out of four plan to encourage their clients to submit an offer that requires the seller to cover the full commission just to learn the seller's portion as part of the normal negotiation process. Much more steering will happen at the direct at the direction of the buyers, of course, when agent responded. I actually have not heard of any steering in the past um, due to the amount of commission that was offered ever. Now with the buyer directing agents to do so, it will happen every day. So what do you think about this? Are you seeing this in your market? I think it's fascinating because um, you know, we 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 just left a world where there was no steering, and now we have an element of steering. Um, that may grow into something. And whereas it's basically going to force the sellers to continue to offer the buyer agent commission. You know, it's, it's the craziest thing. These lawyers made so much money and didn't change a thing when it really comes down to it. Why? Because the market's the market. And the market has been this way for a while. It's been their choice the whole time. Maybe it wasn't disclosed to them properly. And maybe we can change the way that we you know disclose things and explain things or whatever. But it's going to come right back to the same thing. Um, that's just what it is. It's going to be very interesting to see what our market looks like within the next year. Now, this is what I would do if I were representing a buyer. I would tell the buyer, listen, don't worry about if the if the seller is offering a buyer agent commission or not. Don't worry about that. You pick the house that you love. Don't worry about the the buyer agent commission, okay? If we if you if you end up loving a house where they offer it, great. If you end up loving a house that it's not, I will negotiate it into the price for you. I will negotiate it into the price for you. The seller's going to be worried about their net. We'll make sure that we get them what they want. We'll make sure my fees included, and we'll get to a price where everybody's happy. Like I want you to have the house that you love. Okay, I don't want you to settle for something just because a buyer agent fee is being offered or not. And you don't know just because the seller isn't offering a buyer agent fee that they won't pay a buyer agent fee. Matter of fact, I know they will because all they care about is their net. That's it. So at the end of the day, that's how I would handle it to make sure that my buyers are getting the house that they want regardless of what is being offered on the buyer agent commission side. I think that that's an opportunity to explain to your buyers where you can actually build a stronger bond with your buyers, um, a deeper connection, um, you know, prove to them that you're there for them. You're not there for the paycheck and that you 
uh, you, you do a great job. <laughs> you can negotiate, right? You are a real estate agent there to represent their best interest and make sure that they get the deal that they want. So uh, with that being said, Wednesday, I'm going to teach you step by step how to turn your yearly income into your monthly income. And if you missed last week's on 90, why 99% of real estate agents sabotage their own business. I'll put a, put this right here. Just click on the video to watch last week's. People are saying it's one of my best trainings ever and don't miss it this Wednesday. We'll see you on the next one. Until then, keep selling.